Welcome everybody to ACP's Patient Journey webinar. I am Dave Sen, the Marketing Manager and DNI Ambassador with ACP, and my colleague hosting this webinar as well is Andre Ack, Clinical Content Specialist. We're glad you joined us today for this Patient Journey webinar. We developed this interactive tool with our partners and your patients in mind. As our world was navigating the COVID-19 pandemic over this past year, and a number of the patients were challenged with cardiac and pulmonary issues, ACP had a renewed commitment to continue providing our partner with REAC technologies and valuable clinical resources to support your patient's recovery and rehabilitation needs. That is at the heart of why we developed this interactive tool. In part of this webinar, we will review the contents of this patient journey and also talk about how you can interact with it. Throughout this journey, you'll see a number of plus signs that you could click on, and there will be some helpful information and links that will take you to resources, videos, and different information pertaining to that stage. I will give a quick intro here and then hand it off to my colleague, Andre. So starting with the patient journey, unfortunately, a patient starts with hospitalization. The patient is often hospitalized due to complications related to COVID-19. The cardiopulmonary system may be compromised, secondary to the virus. The patient may be immobile and have the need of breathing assistance from a ventilator. And during this extended hospitalization, the patient may develop other complications, including severe deconditioning, dysphagia, and wounds. Following the hospitalization stay, a common level of care that the patient is discharged to is the SNF, skilled nursing facility. I'll let Andre take it from here. Thank you, Dave. As Dave was saying, if you click on these plus signs, you will go directly to the related section. When we look at this journey, starting with hospitalization, the next stage is the skilled nursing facility admission in blue. The rest of these blue triangles all report occur within the skilled nursing facility. So there are multiple components that can occur and can be part of the patient's care. Depending on the need of your patient, we could select or you could select as you're navigating each additional appropriate component. The ultimate end of this patient's journey is with the patient being discharged to the community. As I click on this arrow with the black tab, a menu drops down on the left-hand side of the page. With this menu, you will see the same stages in the patient's journey. The indentation under skilled nursing facility shows that these components occur within the skilled nursing facility. You can navigate by either selecting an item on the left-hand drop-down menu or through the plus signs. When you do navigate through the menu, you'll notice on this left-hand drop-down menu, there's a blue bar that shows which stage of the patient journey you are on. We will address the skilled nursing facility stage next. This is the second stage in the patient journey from hospitalization to discharge into the community. When this page comes up, you'll notice there's a lot of information on the page. I will quickly orient you to the items listed on the page, and then we will go through in detail. The first section at the top shows if ACP's advanced technologies and biophysical agents. These will be pictured on each component of the stage, and they are related directly to that specific stage. The next section you will see is a paragraph of information. This paragraph of information is vital information related to the patient's journey and possible treatments during this specific stage. Then we will see additional information about ACP programming, advanced technologies, and then resources at the bottom of the page. For the items we see in yellow, if we click on them, it will link us directly to the information or the document. We then see, as we go down the page, items like infection control, patient success stories, and marketing materials. Now I will go through this stage and its specific information. Upon skilled nursing facility admission, the interdisciplinary team determines the appropriate programming needs, plan of care, and corresponding COVID-19 outcome measures. This patient requires assistance with bed mobility, transfers, self-care, and gait. 
If therapy is not taking place in the gym, treatment utilizing the Omniversa and other advanced technologies can be initiated bedside to maximize early treatment interventions. ACP's cardiopulmonary dysphagia, fall prevention and balance, neural rehab, and wound management clinical programs can all be implemented to optimize outcomes depending on the patient's impairments. If I click on the yellow cardiopulmonary, it takes us to the additional information on the cardiopulmonary program. It shows the advanced technologies and additional information with links to clinical and technical support, clinical program consultants, and on-demand clinical support team provide ongoing training, mentoring, and support. This is provided on-site or via phone consultations with ACP's expert clinicians. Education and training are conducted with ongoing assessment of clinical needs and development of customized intervention strategies to improve patient and facility performance. Clinical integration. Your CPC will work with your team to integrate clinical programs and identify opportunities and strategies to drive better outcomes. Clinical differentiation. Includes marketing resources and materials to help you stand out from your competition and clinically differentiate your facility with referral sources. So this document helps support an interdisciplinary program. OmniVitals Continuous Monitoring captures valuable individual patient trend data in order to help your staff identify decline in status and intervene early. Timely identification of changes in vital signs, especially with high risk patients, is critical to preventing hospital readmission. AC Plus Interconnected Care Solutions will interface ACP rehab technologies with EMR systems to generate real-time data that will support efficient treatment planning and, as a result, contribute to improved outcomes and five-star quality ratings. As we go down the page, you'll see additional resources listed here. The first document under clinical education that I'd like to go over is a COPD interdisciplinary team quick reference guide. This is a compilation of COPD materials for an interdisciplinary program. It overviews courses with giving items like prevalence, impact, pathophysiology, goes into symptoms, and then it talks about person-centered care plans, brings up nursing considerations, therapy considerations, talks about evidence-based treatment, and then the use of ACP advanced rehab technologies, including the Omniversa, OmniStand, OmniCycle, and OmniVR. So this document is helpful when implementing an interdisciplinary program. The next document I want to highlight is COVID-19 outcome measures, clinical tip. As you know, we really want to use outcome measures as much as possible to provide measurable data on our patients' outcomes. This will help us guide our treatment showing progress or lack of progress and a need to adjust the treatment plan. This is a tip of the month. For those of you who are not familiar with a tip of the month, a tip of the month is a one-page document that is distributed to ACP partners monthly. It covers a topic of interest in therapy, assists the therapist with specific treatment approaches, and provides related research. This tip of the month addresses COVID-19 core outcome measures. The American Physical Therapy Association developed a task force of all academies and sections to identify outcome measures to be used with all patients diagnosed with COVID-19 throughout care in all settings. So these outcome measures can be used in the hospital, the skilled nursing facility, and then when discharged to home and receiving home health. Then when communicated between the settings, the data can be shared and compared to show progress. The identified outcome measures to be used with a patient are in areas when patients have goals related to five specific constructs. The constructs are function, strength, endurance, cognition, and quality of life. The identified outcome measure for function is the short physical performance battery. For strength, it's the Medical Research Council sum score. For endurance, the two-minute step test. Cognition, St. Louis University Mental Status Examination, SLUMS, and for quality of life, it's the EQ5D5L 
health-related quality measure of life. So this is a document that the therapist can use to help them in treating their COVID patients and using outcome measures. We then see items like the general cardiopulmonary treatment pathway, infection control. We all know how important it is to use proper infection control to minimize contamination and spread of disease and infection between ourselves, devices, our patients, and loved ones. These documents can help guide therapists in treatment with proper infection control procedures. Next, we have patient success stories. A patient success story is a document ACP develops in conjunction with our partners as they achieve success with ACP programs. It is a document that can be used for your marketing purposes. At the top, it is branded with your facility logo. This one has the ACP logo, but your facility logo would go here. At the bottom of the page, it has your facility contact information, address, and phone number so that the individual who's receiving this marketing material will know who to contact. First, I will overview what information is included in a success story, and then I will go through it in detail. Towards the top of the patient success story, we see background information that tells us why the patient is in therapy. You may also see explanations in parentheses. These explanations of information are given because the target of this success story may actually be a layman. So we want to make these very easily understood. Below that information, we'll see pre-therapy status, the biophysical agents and advanced technologies that are used are to the right, the therapy information, and then we'll see the outcome data at the bottom. Now I'll review this story in detail. This patient specifically is an 85-year-old female. This woman was hospitalized after falling and fracturing seven ribs. During her hospitalization, she began having complications from chronic heart failure, which resulted in an extended stay of almost a month. By the time she was discharged from the hospital, her function had declined as a result of generalized weakness and pain in her low back and upper shoulders. She was referred to therapy to recover function, treat her pain, and improve her activities of daily living. Pre-therapy, the patient had severe pain in the low back and shoulders. Her bed mobility required maximal assistance. Transfers were totally dependent and actually required two caregivers to transfer her from the bed to the wheelchair. She was then able to walk, and she could not sit for longer than 15 minutes due to her pain. She was generally weak. In therapy, she received lower extremity triphasic pens to the lower trunk and both quadriceps and hamstrings to improve neuromuscular reeducation and strength. Intervention progressed to adding thermal diathermy to both shoulders and the low back to increase her circulation and reduce her pain. She also received omnicycle for both the upper and lower extremities in the neuro mode, with resistance being progressed to improve strength, coordination, and her aerobic capacity. Her outcome, she had pain of only 1 out of 10, very mild. Her bed mobility was independent. Her transfers were independent. She was able to walk 300 feet independently with a rolling walker. She could sit for greater than an hour, and she was generally back to normal strength. This woman is thrilled to be back home, and the rehab director reports the use of electrical stimulation when the patient was too weak to tolerate sitting up for traditional therapy in the gym prevented her from weakening and allowed her to progress at a faster rate. This success should be marketed. It shows your therapy team is using advanced technologies along with skilled services to provide your patient with the best care, optimizing their outcomes. Below this, we see additional 
documents. They are marketing materials that can be used for your facility. One I want to highlight here is a pulmonary patient trifold. A patient trifold is a document that can be folded. This blank section is for your facility logo and contact information. The brochure provides information about the program being used, the evidence-based technology that you're using, and gives some additional information of what is being used and how a program may address patient need. And there's other marketing materials that are available. By clicking just the black menu to the left, we go back to that initial screen and you can navigate again by the plus signs or by the menu bars. But what I wanna show is we covered skilled nursing facility admission. Now these next five sections all occur within that skilled nursing facility. They are speech language pathologist consultation, wound care, therapeutic exercise progression, balance training, and gait training. If your patient does not have wounds, you don't need to look at this component. For our purposes though, we're gonna go through each so you can be familiarized with them. So the next thing we'll go to is SLP consultation. Here you'll see at the top of the screen, the biophysical agents and advanced technologies that can be used in this program. Speech language pathology services may be indicated for this patient post-extubation and or cardiopulmonary disruption. There may also be a need to retrain the coordination of the respiration swallow cycle, re-educate swallowing movements, and address diaphragmatic breathing. A dysphagia rehabilitation program addressing these deficits can be implemented by the speech therapist utilizing the synchrony program with Omni SEMG bedside. Below, we see resources listed, including live, online, and on demand courses, courses such as clinical swallow evaluation, considerations of aspiration pneumonia, head and neck patterned electrical neuromuscular stimulation, PENS. So, there's many trainings to help the therapist learn how to use the advanced technologies and the advanced treatment techniques with their patients. Next, we'll look at infection control. The infection control guidance for ACP products, when we look at the top here, it discusses CDC recommendations for infection control. It then reviews low-level disinfection, intermediate-level disinfection procedures, we then see infection control supplies that can be used. And on the last page, we see frequently asked questions directly related to infection control procedures. So this document can be used when we're implementing infection control procedures in the treatment of our patients. The next item I would like to show you under patient success stories is a COVID-19 patient success story for an SLP patient. This success story is a 91-year-old male. This gentleman, a long-term care resident of a skilled nursing facility, was diagnosed one and a half years ago with oropharyngeal dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, a complication of his Parkinson's disease. Since that time, he has had known aspiration, liquids entering the airway, altered diet, hospitalization for aspiration pneumonia, and COVID-19. Due to his complaint of his liquids being too thick, he requested to participate in swallowing therapy for a possible return to thin liquids. This was his goal. He wanted to drink thin liquids again. As a result, swallowing evaluation and resultant therapy was initiated. Pre-therapy, they did a clinical swallow evaluation and an instrumental swallow evaluation, including video fluoroscopic swallow study. They found poor tongue control and poor control of liquids in the mouth. The man assessment of swallowing ability was 151 out of 200, which indicated a moderate level of dysphagia. In therapy, he was treated four times a week for four weeks. They performed effortful swallow intervention with SEMG biofeedback using kangaroo and work rest cycle visualizations. Therapy included progressing challenging of swallow ability by increasing repetitions to 100 per session and volume of liquids from single to consecutive sips. Trace display visualizations also utilized to decrease excessive tongue movements 
or better control of liquids. For his outcome, he had better control of liquids and improved tongue movement. His MASA score improved to 185 over 200, which indicated no abnormality. This gentleman is pleased with his swallowing therapy outcomes despite his progressive neurologic disease, pulmonary complications, including COVID-19, and lack of success in prior swallowing therapy. He regained functional chewing and swallowing ability with return to drinking thin liquids and greater variety of foods. After learning the results of his final swallow study, he had a smile on his face and exclaimed with joy, I can eat the food and drink what I want now. We can see what a huge impact this is on the patient's quality of life and safety. Successes such as this need to be celebrated and marketed by your facility. Below, we see additional marketing information. The next component we'll go to is wound care. The advanced technology, again, is listed at the top. As we said before, this stage might not be appropriate for your specific patient. You simply select the sections that pertain to your patient when navigating through the patient journey. Wound care may be indicated for this patient secondary to vascular or ischemic manifestations or pressure injury related to limited mobility. In-room treatment using the Omniversa or Omni-SWD can be delivered by the therapist as part of an evidence-based wound management program to optimize wound healing and facilitate progression through the plan of care. The resources listed here, we have training, live and on-demand, infection control materials, I would like to highlight the wound healing diabetic ischemic pressure ulcer pathway. This is a clinical treatment pathway. And when we go through these clinical treatment pathways, what we see on the left-hand column is objective measure testing that we would do. So a patient with a wound may have pain. So we may look at the visual analog scale or the Wong Baker faces scale. We may look at vascular assessment with venous patency or venous fill time. We may look at edema, circumferential measurements and pitting edema grades, drainage or sensory assessment. We then have across the top bar here, the different days. So day one, day two, day three. So there may be different components that you address with this patient. On these treatment pathways, it's showing you all of the components that you could be doing with the patient. So if your patient doesn't have pain, it may not apply to you. So you pick and choose what's appropriate for that specific patient. We may need to do electrical stimulation during debridement procedure due to the patient's pain. We may have a goal of increasing circulation for tissue healing. And in that case, we may use diathermy, ultrasound, or electrical stimulation. We may want to increase blood flow to an area, so we might use a thermal diathermy treatment. PENS can be very important. Uh, PENS is the pattern of electrical neuromuscular stimulation. One of the advantages of PENS is that it actually is set up on agonist and antagonist muscle groups, large muscles in the area. By twitching those muscles, we can also increase circulation pretty dramatically. It also facilitates increased motor unit recruitment and strengthening. We may look at aerobic exercise with this patient, strengthening training, positioning, functional mobility, and pressure relief. The next items, again, infection control are listed, patient success stories, and marketing materials. The next stage is the therapeutic exercise progression. And the advanced, advanced technology, again, it has that listed here. We can click on this. And it links us right to a page with the advanced technologies. They're all listed here. If we click on one specific component, it brings us right to a page that discusses and shows the information related to that. This is the OmniVR, a virtual reality therapy system. And it shows information, including some of the research related to the OmniVR. Virtual reality really uh, gets patients to perform at a much higher level. They enjoy the treatments, they're thinking they're playing games, and it's designed specifically so we're addressing the needs of the patient with their impairments. So we're looking for specific movements and actions and the patient's having fun. 
uh, again, they perform much more activity when doing this. This is a success that occurred with patients during the COVID pandemic, when patients were not allowed to move throughout the facility and go down to the gym. The therapy team brought the Omni VR just outside the patient's room in the hallway, and they had the patient go to the doorway of their room to perform exercise. This is called the virtual day out. So they were able to do more activity, which also gave them a change of scenery, even when the patient was unable to go down to the therapy gym. Here we see additional videos about the component, and then it talks about all of the clinical programs that the patient may be using when they're working with the OmniVR. The OmniCycle, OmniVR, and OmniVersa can be utilized bedside to facilitate early therapeutic exercise implementation. As the patient exhibits improved strength, endurance, and muscle control, therapeutic exercises are progressed. Incorporate these rehab technologies to build fall prevention and balance, cardiopulmonary, and neuro rehab programs with expert guidance of your dedicated ACP clinical program consultant. As we go through here, again, we have education materials and courses available, infection control, and then patient success stories. I want to review this patient success story. This patient is an 81-year-old male. He was referred to skilled nursing facility for rehabilitation services due to severe debility and confusion after hospitalization for COVID-19. During hospitalization, he was found to have acute hypoxemic respiratory failure, not enough oxygen in the blood as a result of COVID-19, and was intubated, placement of an artificial airway into the trachea, and placed on a ventilator, life support to assist breathing. During treatment, he received convalescent plasma, which led to the removal of mechanical ventilation, but he required oxygen supplementation of three liters per minute. Prior to his diagnosis of COVID-19, he lived at home with his wife and walked independently. No oxygen supplementation was needed. Pre-therapy, he required moderate assistance for both transfers and toileting. He was able to walk 50 feet with a rolling walker, but required moderate assistance. In his therapy, he received omnicycle to lower extremities neural mode, which progressed from 15 minutes without resistance to 20 minutes with a level two resistance to improve his leg strength and endurance for transfers and ambulation. His outcome was that he was independent for transfers and toileting with supervision for safety. For ambulation, he was able to walk greater than 200 feet with a rolling walker and supervision for safety. This gentleman and his wife are thrilled with the progress he made in therapy. The director of rehabilitation credits the OmniCycle as an integral part of his plan of care and his improvements in strength and endurance. He no longer requires oxygen supplementation and has now returned home. This truly is a great outcome achieved with this patient. Again, marketing your successes is an important component to having programs that are effective in your facility. It differentiates you from others. We have, again, additional marketing components here that can be used. The next stage we'll go to is balance training. We have the equipment listed at the top of the page. Balance training is initiated as the patient makes gains with core and lower extremity strength and exercise tolerance. Since this patient continues to require assistance with standing, the therapist can leverage the OmniStand and OmniVR to safely and efficiently progress static standing and dynamic balance training. The OmniVersa can continue to be utilized for ongoing strengthening that is critical for improved independence with balance. These technologies could be an integral part in enhancing your community's neural rehab and fall prevention and balance programs. As we look at additional resources here, I'm going to highlight the fall prevention treatment pathway. Again, down the left side of this treatment pathway, we're gonna see outcome measures that can be used. For aerobic capacity, we have the two and six minute walk tests. We have mobility, the tug, gait, looking at gait speed, balance, modify cat sit, muscle performance, 30 second sit to stand test. These are evidence-based outcome measures that should be used 
for these components. We see again, days one through 12 and what should be done with the patient. Again, it depends on the needs of the patient. We may use PENS and MFAC. We may use a cycle walk program. We may use aerobic exercise training, strengthening, range of motion. If there's decreased range of motion, we need to address that range of motion and then work on the strength and the aerobic exercise. We may need postural re-education, balance training, transfer training, and gait training with this individual. This document has two sides. The second page addresses occupational therapy. So outcome measures here for balance, looking at Berg balance, functional reach test. For ADLs, looking at the Barthel index and looking at cognition. Here they may use pens to the triceps, may use the cycling protocols aerobic exercise, range of motion, postural re-education. They may require environmental modifications, energy conservation, ADL training, and cognitive training. The next document I want to show you is the fall prevention ADL assessment. You'll notice with this document, on the left-hand side, ADLs are shown, then the clinical presentation, and then we look at impairments, muscle weakness, and limited range of motion that may be affected. If we look at standing, since we're in the balance section, for a patient who presents with backward sway or falling, we may see weakness of concentric tibialis anterior and limited range of motion of ankle dorsiflexion. So this document helps the therapist identify based on the ADL that the patient can't perform and the clinical presentation, what the impairments are that they may need to address. Next, we will review gait training. Under gait training, the related technology bubbles are shown and you can click on these to take you to the technology information. The OmniCycle, OmniVersa, and OmniVR can be incorporated into the patient's rehab plan of care as part of a gait training program to advance your facility's commitment to helping patients maximize functional gain prior to discharge. As we go down, we'll see additional resources with courses available, fall prevention, hemiplegia gait, residual limb, on-demand courses, the infection control supplies, patient success stories, and marketing materials. This is the fall prevention trifold. Again, we discussed these trifolds. This middle section is used for your facility branding and contact information. The fall prevention trifold shows information about patient's gait, balance, and falls, looking at the programs, the evidence-based outcomes, and the advanced rehab technologies that can be used. This is a marketing material that is effective for your use in marketing your programs. As the patient progresses, ultimately, we come to the last phase of this journey. Dave will now go through the last phase of discharge. Thank you, Andre, for that detailed, comprehensive walkthrough of this wonderful patient journey. As Andre mentioned earlier, the ultimate goal for every patient and for every provider is to get the patient back home with their family, if that's in senior living or at home. When the patient gets discharged back to the community, a number of our technologies can be used that Andre referred to throughout this presentation, including the Omniversa e stem ultrasound unit, the OmniCycle, the OmniStand for bounce needs, the OmniVR for functional therapy, Synchrony Omni SCMG for dysphagia needs, the portable pen, and finally, the Omni SWD diathermy system. Now, what else was covered throughout this presentation? A number of the technologies that you can click on and learn about, but also a number of important clinical resources. Also, Andre did a great job on touching on what our goal is as your partner, is the patient success and outcomes. You'll see a number of success stories, but then also a number of marketing items that can be used to help support your sales efforts. If you want to learn about anything additionally that you saw part of this patient journey, please follow the contact us link that will navigate you to our website and submit an inquiry. While you are navigating the website, you will be able to find this patient journey and we will also share this link. We hope you enjoyed this webinar today and found the resources and information reviewed to be helpful 
to the type of patients that you have in your community and their recovery and rehabilitation needs. Thank you. 